Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Well, from the Nebraska Library Commission, I'm not at the Library Commission today, I'm at home, <laughs> but you guys don't care. Anyway, <laughs> Encompass Live is the weekly webinar series um, from the Nebraska Library Commission. Um, we broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. But if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today. And it is then posted to our website for um, anyone to watch at your convenience. I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of our recordings. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, uh, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Um, here at the Nebraska Library Commission, we provide services to all types of libraries in the state. So you will find um, topics on our show for um, all types of libraries, public, academic, K-12, uh, corrections, museums, archives. Um, it really just runs the gamut, anything and everything. Uh, really, our only criteria is that it's something to do with libraries, uh, something cool libraries are doing. We bring in guest speakers from across the state and across the country um, or um, services and products we think they might be interested in um, and specific programming we do here from the Library Commission, too. There's all sorts of things on the show. Uh, we have, as I said, guest speakers coming from all across the country, but we also have guest speakers that join us um, just from the Library Commission. And that's what we have today. Um, today we are talking about NLC grants for 2022. Um, this is what I've got up here on the screen right now is our Encompass Live website. If you use your search engine of choice and type in Encompass Live, the name of our show, it'll come up first. Uh, nobody else is allowed to use our name because <laughs> we're it on the internet right now. Um, you'll get our main page here. We've got our upcoming shows and our archive shows. Um, today we are talking about the grants that we have available. So this is for today's show. Uh, our grant programs, all of the ones we we're talking about today are run through the Library Development Department. That is, I am the Director of Library Development. That's my official title here at the Library Commission. Um, and with me, and I handle the library improvement grants and the internship grants. Uh, with me today is also uh, Sally. Sally, go ahead and introduce yourself. Yes, I'm the, oh dear. I'm the coordinator of children and young adult library services. I think that's there my you know. official title. <laughs> There's a lot of title I think of all of us, yes. The youth services coordinator, because that's faster. And I'm mm -hmm. in charge of the, this year, ARPA Youth Grants for Excellence. And also Holly is in our department, Holly. Hi, um, continuing education coordinator, so CE and training grants. Yeah. So we kind of split these things up. Hmm? I said easy enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we kind of split these things up amongst our department. So uh, we are gonna talk about the grants that we've available this year. Um, some of these grants we offer every year, it's a regular thing. We'd like to have them be every year all of them. Sometimes due to funding issues, we don't always offer some. Um, uh, the youth grants and the CE grants, we've pretty much done almost every single year over the years. Library improvement and internship have sometimes varied due to funding. Uh, before we get into these grants, I do want to talk about some other uh, funding opportunities and where funding is coming from and how this all works in, in the big picture. Uh, the Library Commission, we receive funding for grants and for a lot of things we do from both federal funding and state funding. Our federal funding comes from the um, Museum um, Institute of Museum and Library Services, IMLS. Um, our state funding comes from the state legislature because we are a state agency in Nebraska. Uh, so depending on how things are arranged budget-wise each year, some of these grants are funded by federal grants, federal federal funding, and have certain federal rules, and some are funded by state. Um, funding and have different roles. So we have separate pages for every one of our grants so that you know how each one of them is working. When we have our federal funding that is used, it is done under the um, Grants to States program that IMLS does, which is all run under the rules of the uh, um, LSTA, Library Services and Technology Act. So it has certain rules. That's where all this comes from. So you will see lots of these acronyms thrown around and all the different pages. 
Uh, but we try to explain in you know, as the details we can the different requirements and rules for each grant. And we'll go into as, mem as much as we can today as well. Now, so that's our basic grants we've always had for years and years. I don't even know when we started doing these, before my time, before all of our times maybe, <laughs> um, all of the three of us. Uh, but I did want to mention where we have funding from, from now um, for some of these and some other grant programs have been going on. Uh, and a lot of this is related to the current COVID-19 pandemic that we are still in. Um, last year, um, the pandemic and everything got started locking down around March and the CARES Act was uh, approved by Congress. And that was the first bit of new funding we had available. This was in response to the pandemic. Um, the Coronavirus Aid, Relief and Economic Security Act, acronym CARES, and we were awarded about $172,000 from that. Um, the total funds available here are listed on this page of what, what is um, was made available for as competitive grants for libraries in the state. Um, we also did uh, a year-long subscription um, to Reader Zone um, for uh, summer reading programs and other kind of reading competitions and programs you may do. Um, so this is the first um, instance of this new funding that came from the federal government. So we had a lot more funding come out. We created a new a new grant um, last year. It was the CARES Act grants. Uh, those grants are done. Um, as you can see from the big red <laughs> warning on the top here, uh, we're wrapping up some <coughs> of the. Uh, paperwork and final reporting for this. So some of you who may have received this may be still hearing from me to get some paperwork in. Uh, however, the pandemic is still going. It is um, actually, you know, has continued and is actually getting worse at the moment. Uh, this year, as you can see here, there is now the American Rescue Plan Act, ARPA. And this was awarded to us also through um, IMLS, same thing as the CARES Act. That's where we get our funding from when it comes from the federal government through the to the Library Commission. It, it funnels to us via the Institute of Museum and Library Services. So we were awarded funding through the American Rescue Plan Act this year. Um, we were given a lot more money this year. Uh, there's a lot more in the um, ARPA this year. We were given um, $2.4 million as opposed to 170 something last year. So we have a lot more money <laughs> to uh, use this year. We are using some of it for some statewide programming, um, statewide services, um, adding items to our overdrive, uh, giving more money, funding to our library systems, um, another year of Reader Zone, a year of Niche Academy for tuning education, um, adding books to our professional collection and our book club kits. Um, there's a whole um, webinar we did specifically about ARPA um, previously. You can watch, you wanna know all the details of that. But the majority of that we allotted to giving grants, giving money directly out to you guys, to the libraries in the state. We have already opened up, uh, and all these grants are available now, um, Earlier this summer, in, in July, we created the new grant program of formula-based grants. And I'm just gonna talk about this very briefly because today we're gonna to get more into our NLC Library Commission grants. But I am just gonna show you this here, formula-based grants. Um, this was every um, public library, tribal library, and institutional library in the state is, is um, has a certain amount of money allotted to you. Um, can I open this up? I'm gonna open this up. Um, there is a base amount of $3,750 for public and tribal libraries and $1,500 for institutional libraries. And we do have a list of who those are, institutional or maybe our state-run institutions, um, youth um, centers, corrections, uh, veterans homes. Uh, but every library in the state, we just took this amount, we took 1.4 million of our 2.4 million and put it into this formula grant program where we just divided it up amongst all of our libraries. Everybody got a gets a base amount and then an extra amount based on per capita based on your population served. We have a list here of all the libraries. So this money is already allotted to you. It's already set aside for you. All you have to do is ask for it. Fill out an application form, we send it to you, and then you decide what you want to spend it on. Um, this is not a typical grant program where you come up with a program or a project and you have to send it to us and get approved. It's a no approval needed. This is just uh, non-competitive. All of this is already out there just waiting for you to ask for it. 
we did do a full presentation about this, so I'm not going to into a lot more detail about this. I just wanted to let you know this is one bit of money that is available for you um, in addition to the grants we're going to talk about today. Um, you can see we are um, keeping track of when um, we received an application, we've paid out, um, when it's been used, so you can look up your library and see where you are in the process and see how much money you may receive. You have until the end of this year to request your funding, December 31st. And you have um, until next May, May 31st, to spend the funding. Um, this is a very quick turnaround. It was the same kind of schedule as the CARES Act last year. This is because this grant and the CARES Act is in response to the pandemic to address immediate issues libraries are, incurring, uh, are encountering due to the COVID-19 pandemic. So this is a very quick thing, um, something you want to do now, something you can get spent out before the end of May next year. So that is the first bit of monies that we uh, allotted to a grant program using the ARPA funds. Uh, all right. We yeah, just double checking on that here. Okay. <laughs> so in addition, as you can see here, we decided to use um, the more of this ARPA funding as the funding source for our library improvement grants for this year and our youth grants for excellence for this year, which means um, a couple of really cool things for you guys, the library's applying. Um, there's a lot more money available. Typically, recently in the past few years, we've only had 18 to 20, 25 thousand dollars available for each grant. Um, we are starting out with 75 thousand dollars allotted to the youth grants and 150 thousand dollars allotted to the library improvement grants. So we have a much larger pot of money um, available. And because of this also, we have more um, open rules um, to them. So, and we'll get into the details about that. So there are three ARPA, this is getting, it's getting kind of confusing to some people and I have a lot of people asking about it. So that's why I'm trying to explain very clearly what we got going on here. And I know it does get confusing, but hopefully with what we have listed here on this page, it helps. There are three different grant um, opportunities that use ARPA funding. The formula-based grants, the library improvement, and youth. You can apply for all three. There is no rule that you can only apply and get one ARPA-related funding. You can apply for all three of these at separate pots of money just using ARPA. Uh, we also have our continuing education grants and our internship grants are being funded by our state funds instead, um, not ARPA funds. They are, and we'll talk about them later. Um, also, because of the money we have from ARPA to put into these two grants, we also have more money available in both of those programs as well. So if um, we have also had to sometimes restrict uh, giving our internship grants because we ran out of funding, our budget was used up, we have a lot more money available to that as well this year um, because of ARPA. Um, all of this funding, um, ARPA-based, is a uh, one-time thing. Uh, it's not something that you can assume will continue. Uh, our, right, our grants that we do, our four usual grants, we try to do them every year with various funding, but these big amounts of money and special rules, this is this year only. So if this is something you have thought about before doing and you haven't applied or you just hadn't gotten around to it or you weren't sure if we should do, this is the year to do it because we have a lot more money available and we have it to give out. Um, it's for you guys to use. So um, this is the year to think about getting on top of this. All right, let's see here. I don't want to first. Um, on the session page for today's show, it links to our main NLC grants uh, web page about the four main grants that we have, which I think I have. Yes, which is right here. Um, you can also find all of these links to all the different kind of grant things we do on our website here on this flyout menu under grants, funding, and E-rate. Um, you can see look up who's received grants. This is linked to all the different grants we have available and some information about other grant sources. So this is another way to get to this if you haven't gotten my quick link for this. Um, so this is our main screen for the four grants that we're gonna now talk about today. So the formula grant is kind of its own thing, it's ARPA related, and then we've got these four. Um, and what I think we'll start with is um, doing these in the order that they opened up. Yes, just because um, 
now you can see here we've got all of our dates available uh, of when the grant go becomes available when it's due and when you'll find out if you've received it or not uh, library improvement and youth grants for excellence opened up last month um, internship grants will open next week and we're we're 99.9% .9 ready <laughs> with all of our behind the scenes things and in uh, application forms. And CE and training grants will open up next month. So you've got all your dates on here for our upcoming grants. Um, okay. Uh, So another thing, I mentioned there is different rules for many of these grants because of the ARPA funding that is coming from. And I'm going to start with talking about it related to the library improvement grants. We'll start with those since that's the first ones that became available by one day than the youth grants. Um, so you'll notice that our youth and the library improvement grants are for this year only called the 2022 ARPA library improvement grants and the youth will be 2022 ARPA youth grants so we can differentiate them and tell them apart from our usual ones. Uh, the some of the rules that are changed because of the funding and where it's coming from from the um, American Rescue Plan Act is uh, there's no local match required and uh, someone just did ask that question yes. <laughs> um, for the formula grants it's just a set amount of money you get no match to do anything you want to do and this year only for the library improvement and youth no local match required. This is not typical, so uh, usually there is a 25% match, so don't get used to it. <laughs> um, but normally you have to come up with some funding um, to help uh, fund whatever project you're coming up with. You can't apply for the full amount from our grants. This year you can. Whatever your project is for, apply for that full amount. And if we approve it, you'll get that full amount. You do not have to come up anything at your side. So this is a good year definitely to get into grants because you don't have to worry about that part. There, um, we've also expanded who is eligible to apply for these grants. Um, previously, it was you needed to be an accredited public library in the state or a state-run institution. Because of the rules and regulations for giving out the ARPA money, it is expanded um, to all legally established public libraries, both accredited and unaccredited, as well as all tribal libraries in the state and state-run institutions. So. Anybody, this is the same thing that we did last year for the CARES Act. So if you were involved in the CARES Act grant or if you ever looked at that or if you received one, it's the same kind of rules. No local match and all public libraries are eligible um, in the state. If you're wondering if this means you, um, you can kind of, you can double check by looking at the formula grants page and this list of libraries. Anyone who's eligible for the formula grants is eligible this year to apply for library improvement and youth grants. This is kind of our list of all those libraries that we determined are legal. Um, if you think a library should be on here and isn't, let us know. We have contact info here. Sam Shaw in our library commission is in charge of that. I think we got it all done and figured out from Florida grants, but you might have missed somebody. So those are the two big things this year is the no local match required and all legally established public libraries are eligible. Um, accredited and unaccredited. So um, that's a big deal. We're thrilled to be able to do that and we hope more libraries will apply. The library improvement grants are to, as it says here, they do follow the LSTA purposes. There is an um, Library Services and Technology Act five-year plan the commission does every year and we have certain things that they want us to address. Uh, so uh, library improvement grants um, can be used for doing programming, uh, getting new um, furniture, updating computers, all sorts of things, pretty much anything and everything you can do um, digital, um, you know, getting a, a new database, buying more ebooks, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so it's, it's uh, pretty broad what you can apply for here. Um, we do have a list, list of some of the suggested items here as well. Um, oh, I'm for here. Ah, question, are colleges eligible? Um, no, not for these grants. Well, not directly for these grants. Um, the library community, there's different funding um, from ARPA that has been given to universities or a department of education or through the university systems or uh, through the uh, state's department of education that um, colleges or universities or K-12s could apply for. Um, however, we do encourage um, partnerships. So if a college or something else 
some organizations not eligible themselves wanted to partner on some sort of program or project with a public library or a tribal library or one of the state institutions, then um, you know the eligible entity could apply and you would be a partner with them and then you would benefit from whatever that project is you've um, put together with them. Um, that goes for the formula, library improvement, and the youth um, all follow the same rules. Good question about that, and I'll answer your question, Joy, when we get to the internship grants. Um, ah, all right, so um, I'm keeping an eye on your questions, and there's some things we're going to be getting to as we get to them, so I may um, get to them as we, I know we're going to be talking about things. So these are the basic program goals, goals for library improvement grants. However, because the funding is through ARPA, there's also additional goals. Basically, for anything ARPA funded, which is the formula grants, library improvement, and youth, the key thing is it is in response to the pandemic. So whenever you're thinking about what you might use the funds for or thinking of putting together a program or a project, that is something that has to be one of your first things that you figure out is what does this have to do with what's going on with the pandemic? Why am I doing this in response to the pandemic? Um, so they do list some of their goals that are ARPA specific, um, enabling libraries to reach residents with internet hotspots, Wi-Fi, digital content, so um, getting laptops, hotspots in your library, upgrading your internet, um, buying anything virtual, doing any um, virtual reading programs, any of those kind of things. Um, any of your safety things that you still might need to respond and keep safe to the pandemic. Last year with the CARES Act grant, that was one of the big things because everything was just starting up, um, was um, masks, uh, hand sanitizer, um, and now that we know a lot more about it, um, you can do things like um, air filters, air purifiers, um, hands-free washing stations, uh, uh, anything related to that. Um, now that the, you know, since the pandemic is still going and it is actually getting worse at the moment, you may need to restock some of those items your mask, your 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 um your masks, your gloves, your hand sanitizer, um cleaning supplies, any of that you can use um either your formula grant or your um this grant for. Um, and then basically anything else you might need to do, um personnel, technology, training, supplies, um, equipment, uh, you can use as well. Always thinking in the terms of what does it have to do with the fact that we were in a pandemic. So there is some extra rules this year different from last year in that um, respect. Um, the grants are due October 7th, and you'll know by October 29th if you've been approved for the library improvement grant. Uh, same things as format grants, you must be do all the spending by the end of May next year. So this is some things for, for a quick project. Um, we will work with you if there is a need for an extension or special circumstances or something. Just reach out to us and ask. Reach out to me for these, you know, my grant, the, the grants I'm in charge of, and just ask. Um, we're doing a really quick turnaround on these because you have these multiple pots of money, I like to describe it, to use. Um, the formula grants and the li and library improvement grants, you can use for pretty much the same things. Um, if you notice, once we get to the list of eligible costs, it's all the same list. Um, but the formula grants is that limited amount that you are just, you, know, you did the math and figured out how much each library gets. Library improvement grants, if you have something maybe bigger or extra that you want to do that the formula grant didn't cover, you could, I would recommend then doing a, a library improvement grant. Um, this is a uh, comp competitive grant. These are competitive grants we're talking about now with the library improvement in youth. Um, so you will send them in, we'll evaluate them, compare them to all the other grants, see what money we have. Um, available, and then we would let you know if you've been approved or not. Um, but we're doing a really quick turnaround, so you'll know by the end of October if you've gotten your library improvement grant, and then you can decide, okay, I got this money, I'll use the formula grants for other stuff now that I know I've got the library improvement grant for this particular project. So you got to kind of think big of, I got these different pots of money that I can use for all the same kind of things, but which ones do I want to use for which project? Um, so if you don't have anything right now that you're, you're sure what you want to do with that formula grant, do a no library improvement grant, see if that gets approved, and then figure out where you can use the formula grant money for. So it's a lot of money, it is. And I know some libraries are getting overwhelmed with it. We don't even know what to do, um, but that's okay. We just need to get it out to you. Um, 
that got a list here again of the eligible entities and our link to who are identified institutional libraries. Uh, public libraries do need to be legally established. The basic requirements for being legally established as a public library is your library is created um, via an ordinance or a um, created by your community, by your by your city, your village. Um, declaring that we want to have a public library and you have to have a library board of five members um, that is the two main requirements for creating your public library that's about the rules about running a library but those are the two things you definitely have to have and that makes you legally established um, now we'll get into the examples i know you want to know what can i do with this money i'm sure um, as it says here this is not every single it's not the only things this is just to give you some ideas and a basis of how this all works um, we also have some ineligible uh, uh, lists in the bottom. And uh, let's see. I'm just reading through the questions we have. Ah, interesting question that um, the range, someone wants to know, and I'm just gonna answer this right now, I'll jump in while um, I see it, is what is the range of the grant sizes expected for library improvement or the number of awards you expect to make? Um, we don't know. Uh, we don't really gauge, guess that. Um, I think in my library and in my internship when I say 20 to 25, uh, but it will just depend on how many we get. Um, over the years, it has varied from we get 20 applications or we get 50 applications. Um, so uh, there is no limit to how much you can ask for on any of these grants. We don't have a maximum or a minimum you have to ask for. Just do whatever you want. Uh, we just take the money we have and see what we can give out. We do award partial grants for library improvement and um, youth. So if we have to figure out, we really love this all these projects, but we do have a minimum limit of money, we may say, okay, we love your $10,000 project, but we can only give you five. And we will partially do awards if we need to. So we do not know how many we'll give out. We just want everyone to apply and we'll figure it out. So what we got here, furniture. Um, and what's a key thing here, and someone did ask about, wanted to know if it can be used to help replace an elevator. So let's talk about construction before I get into this. Construction projects, this is an LSTA rule. This is coming from the Museum of Library and Services, mm -hmm. the Library um, Technology Act that all of this comes from. Doing major construction projects is not eligible for federal funding. Um, it's just a rule that they have. So if you have, we have a little blurb about this down here, construction installation costs. So if you need to hire a contractor or someone in the construction trade um, that has to come in to do this work, running electrical, digging up something, building something into your walls, um, any sort of that major construction projects are not eligible for this funding. So replacing elevator would not be an eligible project for this. Um, what are some other things we've had? Uh, you know, so installing something new, anything that requires, you know, running electrical, running power cables, uh, running new, you know, anything like that. So you have to hire someone to come in. However, they do allow what they call construction light, which is if you, someone in your library, your own library staff, or just someone from the city maintenance people who take care of your building anyways, could install or update or put something in with their own tools, like a hammer or screwdriver, really easy, um, something that easily can be then removed, that is eligible. Uh, for example, last year we had a lot of libraries who put up the plexiglass barriers. That's just a quickie, screw it in type thing. That kind of construction was allowed. It's a construction light is what they they describe it as. Um, so major construction remodeling projects, no, if you have to come bring in a plumber to run things like all those contractors, but something you can do simply yourself, your staff, or something from your city could do uh, easily, um, yes. We highly recommend you ask us about those things first though. So if you're unsure, just shoot us an email um, and ask, what about this, what about that? And we will you know, double check and see if it is something that would be allowed. So for all of these things here, we have listed as examples. We do miss mention furniture and equipment and IT and computers. Yes, you can get furniture, um, anything for your library. It has to be movable or modular or easily to install. Um, we do list uh, cleaning things and um, touchless dispensers for towels or disinfectant sprays um, or uh, well, um, 
water bottle filling station. Some of these can be installed simply by just, you know, you know, putting a stand up in the library. Those kind of freestanding things, yes. Things that require running something through your walls and construction, that's where you got to cross the line into that construction area. Um, so, uh, IT equipment, computers. Um, you can buy new computers, update computers, upgrade your Wi-Fi. Uh, you do need to be CIPA compliant. Compliance with the CIPA um, Children's Internet Protection Act that requires um, having filters on your computers. So if that's something you don't have, I can talk to you about that. We can talk more another time. Um, if you do, or you already are, then you're good to go. You can get all of these kind of things to upgrade all of your computers and your Wi-Fi connections. Like I said, updating any of your cleaning supplies, buying more masks, PPE equipment. Uh, your collections, this is something different too. You can use this funding to buy books, buy, you know, if you are, your budget maybe has been cut due to the um, tax revenue in this community going down because no nobody's going out and buying things due to the pandemic. You can update your collections, buy books, buy magazines, electronic, CDs, DVDs, anything you lend out. Um, you can do. You could uh, get a, a database, get over, join OverDrive, um, subscribe to Hoopla, all sorts of different online databases as well. If you have a meeting room, you can update that with equipment for that. Same kind of thing if it requires major construction, running wiring, no, but if you're just replacing something, for example, we need to just, we're getting a, a new monitor or a new projector, so it's just going to be swapping out the old one for the new one. That's not a problem. Um, things like putting in, uh, I know some libraries have asked about doing um, self-checkout stations or updating their security. So you're just setting something on a desk and plugging it into your system. That's, a, that's eligible. If you have, however, had to run wiring to get that installed, run electrical and they had to get into your walls, that's where you cross the line. So if you're just updating something or something easy, kind of plug and play type thing, that is um, eligible. Um, and then think about outdoors. Um, a lot of people last year switched to doing a lot of their summer reading things or events um, outside uh, for safety. Keep doing that and buy the equipment you might need for that outdoor furniture, um, charging stations. Oh, story walks are great. Love those. <laughs> um, so thinking about that. Um, this is just examples. If you're not sure and you want to know before you do your grant application, shoot us an email and ask. Uh, one other rule here, as you can see, if any individual piece of equipment is costs over $5,000, you definitely have to be pre-approved from us. Um, we actually have to ask IMLS for, IMLS for approval for you to do that using these grants. So I know we just had one recently, someone doing a makerspace, and one of the pieces of equipment, I forget which one, if it's a laser cutter or something, is more than $5,000 is that one piece of equipment. We just have to ask, you just have to let us know. We have to ask IMLS if that's allowed. You know, if they will give their approval for um, using the funding for that. Um, any questions about what you can get and being eligible? What do we have here? Um, Um, and then we have here our ineligible costs, the things you cannot use this funding for. Uh, as I mentioned, construction, no. Uh, food and beverages, you can't buy food. Um, something that some people don't realize that's important, sales tax. Uh, ideally, libraries should not be even be charged sales tax. You are nonprofits. Um, if you don't have that already set up um, with whoever you're buying things from, you should do that. <laughs> um, but you also cannot use this money to pay for the sales tax either. So when you submit your invoices saying, here's everything we bought, we will only, we have to look at it before the sales tax if for some reason some uh, company is charging you sales tax. Uh, giveaways, you no know, built-in furniture. Um, the You can purchase things before you actually get these grants. This is something that has to do with ARPA. It had to do with CARES Act before as well. Um, when we were awarded the ARPA funding was March 15th of this year. So for the library improvement, and I think for the youth too, Sally, you were going to do yeah, that one? That's right. Yeah. Um, it can be for something you'd already purchased. Um, you're just submitting the application now to get that as more of a reimbursement type thing. But March 15th is that earliest deadline. Um, and you have to have everything spent by May of um, end of May next year. 
Um, advertising and PR is something to remind you about as well. Um, you can't just say, um, it has to be very specific to what it is that you're promoting, for any specific program, not just, yay, libraries are great, come and visit us. So they have, this is a LSTA rule about advertising and public relations. So be specific if you are gonna do that kind of PR, um, as you can see from the examples we have here. Uh, for the grant, after when you um, after you apply, if you get approved, you will have to then submit to us invoices showing everything you purchased. So you'll send us that um, paperwork, and there is going to be a completion report that will be submitted later as well. Um, on our website right now, we have a preview of that report, um, a uh, word document, so you can see what it does look like. We're going to be making that online next year when it is actually time to submit your completion report. So that'll be also an online um, available. Let's see what we have here, some questions. Can we make additional documents, email additional documents to you like we have in the past, or do you not want that? Well, it depends on what you mean about what additional documents. Um, anything you want to send us that has to do with what you're doing, um, if you're talking about ahead of time, you can send us information about here's what we're thinking about buying, sure, um, but you will need to send us uh, the invoices showing what you purchased um, afterwards, after you've been awarded the grant. Um, and then, so anything that might help, tell us about it. We ask for that with the youth grants usually. If they have yeah. already looked and um, have a list of books they want to buy for a particular project, then they send us that list. Here's what we're planning on buying if we can, or mm -hmm. types of equip, uh, supplies for uh, construction or making things. Not that construction word, sorry. Makerspace. Yeah. So that so those some of some of those kind of rules we've had before do still apply, yes. So this is kind of a mishmash of the old rules and new rules. <laughs> um let's see what we have. Does the application need to be specific? Like only pick one project and not multiple, like outdoor furniture plus cleaning plus oops. Oh, okay. Um For the library improvement grants, uh, you do, you can do one big application for everything. Um, I'll show you here the application form. Uh, basic info, there's a lot of questions here that you, you specifically say what this uh, application is related to. So if you can somehow explain in your summary here all these different things, you could do one application or you could do multiple um, if it seems to make sense, better sense for you to split it up into two because they're two really big separate projects. So um, whichever way you think makes easiest sense, but um, with the CARES Act, we took applications that were we want protective supplies, we want to do virtual programming, and we want to get some um, picnic tables for outside, all is one in one big grant. And that is perfectly fine. Um, you just explain it here. You've got a nice big box here that you can keep typing in as much as you need to. Um, and then um, you do have to choose what it applies to. So you might choose multiple activities and things. I'm not going to get into the details of all these. You can look through these when you're applying. But I wanted to scroll down to the budget section to show you we do have here where you will put in each thing you are wanting to um, use funding for, you'll allot it to a certain category. So you could do this as a grant request uh, for multiple, what you might think of as different projects and just divvy them up here. And you'll just describe, we've got all this free text boxes, you just type in, just explain what you wanna do, let us know. This is my favorite box because this is where you can get specific about if you say I want to buy an all workstation because that would be for the use grants um, tell me in there do you want it to have connection to the internet or do you want it to be standalone only which makes a difference in the SEPA information mm -hmm. standalone yes. then it doesn't apply to SEPA but um, so that's where I want some I don't want to just say one all workstation however much money tell me a little bit more thanks for letting me jump in Mm -hmm. Oh, no, absolutely. Um, oh, and somebody did say there is a word limit. I couldn't write everything I wanted to. <laughs> yes, we have had that before. Um, I might be able to see if we can increase the word limit on this. I'm not sure what it is, but if there's not enough, we've had other libraries do this. If there's not enough space on here and you want to get your application in, um, you can send us an extra document. Yes, if you need to. Um, you can just, just send me an email saying, I did the main application, but it didn't have enough for me to write it all out. So here's now a Word document with what I wanted to say. Um, and that's perfectly fine. Yep. So if you need to do that, go right ahead. Just let me know. Just you know, send a little warning. I'm sending you something extra to please attach to my uh, actual grant application. 
with the youth grants, I had Vern, um, the first box you can fill in. The executive summary. Grants was limited and, and it's never been before. So he worked on it and it's supposed to expand however big you need it to. But um, I, I'm fine with either way. Send me more information is great. The more information, the better. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, okay, so here's another question about what to well, ask for. Um, would improving office space furniture work for this? Like getting desks or something you can add to the desk for staff that allow them to stand and use a computer, or does it have to benefit just the library patrons? Um, no, it's not just for your library patrons. It can be for your staff as well to make sure they can do their job. If it's something, yep, absolutely. Uh, something else that is important here is new this year because it's ARPA funding. So this is formula grants, library improvement and youth, a DUNS number. This is a number that the FCC, that, that the government requires you have to do, do business with them. Um, you might already have one. You might not know it. We have a link where you can check and look up and see if you have one or not. Um, if not, you can apply for one. It's pretty quickly. Um, they just give you a number and you enter it in here. We need to provide that because of this is being ARPA funding. All the legal stuff is here at the bottom of the form. I'm just going to scroll past that. Feel free to read it. And then you just enter your name here and submit the application. Something new this year we have eliminated, and this is going to be for the future, no more sending in that separate signature page to sign your application. We're going, we're, we've finally moved into the future <laughs> and electronic signatures are, we are accepting. So you just fill this in, submit it, and you're done. You're not going to send us anything extra to officially apply for, uh, to submit your grant application. All right, so that is our library improvement grants. Let's, oops, let me pop back to the main page here. Um, let's talk about the youth grants now, Sally. I'm going to hand over to you. Well, not hand over. I'm going to go into your page here and you can talk about them. Some of the things that I already mentioned apply here too. So um, we'll try not to repeat all those things um, because this is ARPA funding. Um, but I'm going to let Sally talk about some of the things that are specific to the youth grants that she handles. Well, I would just like to say that. Um, Usually, the youth grants have been provided with state funds, as um, Chris had said earlier. So that's why this looks so much different, is because it's ARPA funds and it's federal funds, and there's requirements, like she said, that we have to meet. So that's important. I I am I got really crazy and said we don't need any rules. So we, well, yeah, <laughs> we do need a few. Because <laughs> I, I thought, who cares? Um, all, like Krista said, all legally established libraries can apply, accredited, unaccredited. I hope we get a whole bunch of applications from unaccredited libraries because this is your chance to get in there. And because we have a larger amount of money than usual, I'm not too worried about having to be nasty. But, <laughs> okay, tough. Tough, um, yeah. <laughs> I don't like being tough. I'm not good at it. <laughs> but the, the th other thing I want to emphasize is that these are competitive as they have always been. And so the more you tell us about what you want to do and what you how you think that will benefit your community will be great. Mm -hmm. um, if you just say, I want to have four programs and buy some books, I think that's nice. But tell me a little more about that. How, what kind of programs for what ages and who are you bringing in somebody or you know, just some more details. And you don't have to have everything nailed down yet. And the other thing for you to know is, here's what I've planned. I got the grant. Now I can't do X because the person I wanted to give the presentation is unavailable or whatever else comes along. The item I wanted to buy, they don't manufacture it anymore. Is it okay uh -huh. if I buy instead of this one, if I buy that one? Just email me and say, hey, I was gonna get this, it's not available. How about if I get that? And it's a 99% chance that I'll say, yes, thanks for asking. It's because not that's in all. It's okay. We know things change. Yeah. yeah. It's a plan and it's not going to be executed just exactly as you, as you got going on it. We know that. So don't worry about it. Just let us know. I want to change this or um, 
it turns out Legos are extraordinarily popular in my library and I was going to do this uh, Tinker Toy thing, but now I think maybe I should do more Legos. Okay, you know what the kids are coming in for. If, if uh, more Legos is the best thing, just ask and say, instead of buying Tinker Toys, I don't have anything against Tinker Toys. Uh, <laughs> then uh, we wanna do this, just ask. Probably, mm -hmm. I mean, it's highly likely, I'll say sure. I don't know why I would say no to that. So the first, in the application, the first box is kind of where you say, what is it I'm thinking of doing? Um, something yeah. I want to jump in before I go into the application, I wanted to just say, I'm here. Something that's also new, and you mentioned this kind of in passing before, but some people might recognize this. You can this year purchase those all workstations. Yes, thank you. Recent years that has been a uh, um, not allowed um, for years. I know you did do it, and then it seemed like that was you know we wanted to um, encourage libraries to do other things, so we're not going to fund those for a while. But now, yes, if you had been putting off getting one or couldn't because we said no, <laughs> um, now you can for this year only. Make sure you can pay attention to that. Um, and we're just going to go down here. You've got your timetables, the same program role goals for ARPA. Um, eligible entities, um, some of the information that you were just talking about, about doing your application. But if you look at the ineligible costs and um, the eligible costs that are on the Live Improvement Grant page, it's all the same kind of things, but the key with this is it has to have something to do with U13. Right. Um, Sally's got great examples here of good applications um, and tips and things. But yeah, I'll get down here to the actual application itself. And there's something else too. You used to have multiple applications. That's right. There's just one. <laughs> <laughs> um, there was the short and the long application for youth, depending on how much money you wanted to spend, short application for a smaller amount. Um, this year, we're just um, consolidating them. You don't have to pick and choose just one application for anything youth, no matter what the amount is. No minimums or maximums. So, right. And so this looks a lot like the library improvement grant application because they're pretty similar. But in that project summary, that's really where I want you to give me some information that should expand big enough so you can say. And as, as Krista had answered, if you have a teen project and a project for elementary students that are not the same, I hope, you can you can put your app all in one application and you can just say my my first project is for this age group and we're going to do this and this and this my other project is for teens and we're going to do that and that and that and that and then you know when you get to the project or the budget sheet you can plug in all the numbers and and you can get the totals there and then yeah, I would just say for, for both of these just be very clear about what each of your projects might be um what they are and then what amount of money is for each one because if we do need to do some of those partials this would be a way we could we would want to know you know um, and I, I hope this doesn't happen but you know the youth project is this much the teen is this and we discover well we're short on money we can only fund the teen one not the youth and this gives us a good you know differentiation of this is how much money was for that project and this is how much is for that project so make sure you be just very specific about the, the amounts and what they're for. And sometimes I tell people, if the youth project and the teen project are essentially the same amount of money, but we can't fund both, I'll say, we can fund one of these. You choose which one your uh -huh. community most yeah. wants. Oh, yeah. Because we can do that, too. I Absolutely. That we don't have to tell you well, which one. We'll let you decide. Really, yeah. So that's, but sometimes if, if the one project is $500 and the other project is $2,500, then uh, we might not be able to do the larger sum. And then mm -hmm. we'll tell you that. Um, so again, in the project summary box, after you do your budget, then there's that box. And if it doesn't expand, um, then you can send me it, like like Krista said, you can send me a, a Word document or yeah, looks like it. I was just playing around with it. I'm sure, you know, typing in the words and playing with the box are two different things, so I don't know. <laughs> One of the things you might want to do, it's up to you, is to type what you want to tell me in a different word processing program and get it the way you want it to look and then copy and paste it in here and oh, see yeah. how it fits. Hopefully it all will, but I 
don't I know the first box he adjusted so that it will mm -hmm. take everything you want to tell and that's an important tip because these these do not save and then you can come back to them you know you have to submit fill all this in right when you're ready to submit it so yeah write up your descriptions and your long textual stuff elsewhere and then just copy and paste it in so you're ready to go to hit and submit. then run it by somebody else who hasn't been working on this if you if you write it all up in a different word processing program and then you your library board president happens to be in you can say Take a look at this. This is what we're thinking of doing, because she's going to want to know anyway, and it's probably a her, right? Anyway, it might be a him. Then, then they can say, well, this looks great, except I don't quite understand what this means. And it might be because they're not a librarian, but it might also be because what I do when I write is I write, I know what I know, so I put it in there. And then I show it to somebody else, and they go, what do you mean by this? They go, oh, yeah, <laughs> I better be more clear about that particular part so then that just helps mm -hmm. so run it by somebody else and see am i forgetting to include something and we will now they're gonna i'm hoping there'll be a lot more applications so this will be a little trickier because we have a shorter time frame for actual decision making but as they come in i'm planning on reading the applications and when questions come up to me i'm going to contact you and say um, you said this, and I, I'm not quite sure what that means. And then I'm going to type up a little email that says, here's what you explained to me, was I right? And you can say yes or no, but that way I have something to put in the file that clarifies that so that when our meeting happens, my team members, and if they'll ask me the same thing, and I'll say, oh, here's what she said about that. And it makes it so much better. Yes, we may ask for clarification on things, yeah. Don't be concerned if I ask you, what does this mean? I'm just... I'm just looking at it through my brain and I couldn't look at it through yours. So it's it's not a scary thing at all. Just more information. Mm -hmm. Ooh, I'm taking up too much time. Oh no, it's okay. Um, and then the rest of this application is the same as the library improvement because it just has the same certifications and assurances and the DUNS number and same thing, just save and submit. No extra signature page needs to be sent in. So, and if you have questions, please call. I'll, I'm here a lot right now, but Friday mm -hmm. afternoons, maybe not. We're all then, available. Yeah, you know, give me a call. Yeah. Yeah. No, it is getting a little close to the top of the hour, but that's okay. Um, we will. Um, we have a lot to talk about today. I knew this would run run long. It, it always does. Um, but not a problem. We'll keep going until we get all the all the information out that we need to. Um, we're recording. If you need to leave because you only allotted an hour to watch with us today, that's okay. You can watch the rest of the recording later. Um, you can always ask us all any questions at any time. Yes. Anything else about the youth grants? I think we covered it. I, I would recommend reading through that top part where it says things you can ask for this year that you want probably won't be able to next year, or I don't know, things might change. Yeah. So the Anybody have any questions about youth grants specifically, go ahead and type them in. I don't see anything right now. Um, but yeah, that's the thing too, this big extra amount of I money say here. Hmm? On that list there, it has all hope stations are an equivalent item, play away. Um, Computers, Check furniture, mm -hmm. yeah. and computers. Uh, and um, all of these things that we're talking about here, all of those rules, because this is the LSE money that you saw about construction and, and whatnot, that all applies to these youth grants as well, because it's the same. All, all of these should be aimed at service for teens and kids, right. you know, ages zero to 18. Now, there might you might want to get a computer for your, your children's librarian. That would apply to the children's librarian giving service to those age groups. So in my yes. opinion, that would be okay. But if mm -hmm. you're also doing a library improvement grant, you might also be able to, I don't know. I don't know what Krista would say about that. We want five, yeah, good. one for them. But yeah, if you, yeah, if you want to go for youth one instead and see if, yeah, absolutely. Um, we do have a question and I think I know the answer, but I'll ask you, Sally. What about escape room supplies or lockbox supplies? Yes, and you those are in. program supplies, so absolutely. absolutely. And, we love and those. Those are fun. 
you know, teens in particular love maker spaces and, and younger kids also love the button makers and things like that. And you've got to have supplies for those things too. If you already have a button maker, you just might want to get some more supplies for that. Plus, mm -hmm. you might want to get some books for your collection, like Krista had said earlier. And usually I say, no, you can't just generally say, I need more history books, I need more uh, mysteries. It has to be something to do with your project. But this year, let me buy books. Or, I see. Yeah. We know you might be struggling and we want to make sure you do that. Um, and we did mention, and this is something that relates to that, and I want to show it on the application form. Um, yeah, we were very careful. We worked on this wording. Um, with, with youth grants, oh. always been you have to have a project, some sort of a, a an event or an activity you're doing. Um, and one program is at least one is required, but it can be an actual like we're doing an event or we're doing a you know a, a craft thing. But it can also simply be Sally said this is okay, an open house to let people see the things you have. We're having an open house to show off the new books we bought for the teen collection that's acceptable this year we're trying to be as willing to help you make this happen as possible but you gotta do something <laughs> it's acceptable um, every year for me if you have mm -hmm. an open house to celebrate your all workstation or the collection for teens or the teen makerspace new items i know you're not going to call it the teen makerspace but you know we bought the button maker for the teens here's our open house here's a button maker go to it teens that's great I think some people get caught up on the oh god I have to come up with a program an actual event you know with you know but it doesn't have to be anything too overwhelming <laughs> if you're not ready to come up with something yeah Oops. all right don't let me have any other questions about the youth grants let me get back to um, let's pop over, let's jump up to the top here and talk about the CE and continuing education and training grants. Um, Sally and I have been talking a lot. Let's get Holly back into here finally. <laughs> um, CE and training grants are going to open up next month. Um, yep. They're due in January and you'll find about those in February. Yep. Okay. So this one will be pretty quick because there really isn't much different this year. Um, for the CE grants, if you want to go to the grant information, the big scary red box will be gone. <laughs> um, so this year, again, we're not going to focus on a specific conference. We're going to open them up. Um, you can do online learning. So if there's a course you want to take um, or if you want to attend a conference or a workshop, or if there's a larger CE project you want to do for your library or your staff, um, any of those will work for this grant. Um, and on this page, you can kind of scroll through. So for the online learning, some different course ideas, um, you know, like library juice courses or the ALA courses online. Um, college courses won't count. Um, so for the CE grants, they do have to be the accredited public libraries or board members, current board members. Um, conferences or workshops, um, out of state. Costs will cover your registration, your travel, um, meals. Um, the only thing we won't cover is maybe like some of the social events. Um, that they might have. Um, and do the more educational stuff. Yes. Yeah, so, so like if, although that can be educational, but you know, yeah. it can. But it can if things that would not, wouldn't wouldn't qualify for CE credits, you don't get CE credit for correct. hanging out in the bar in the evening. But you might have learned a lot. That's nice. Yeah. But <laughs> but we're not going to pay for it. <laughs> um. So with the conferences, especially this last year and this next year, where a lot of places are planning on in-person events, um, you can go ahead and apply to attend in person. Um, when you fill out the application, you can um, set your budget, you know, for the travel, the, the lodging, um, airplane, all of that good stuff. But as time goes on and depending on what happens with the pandemic, um, a lot of conferences are making changes and some of them are still going virtual 
later um, and that's okay as soon as I'm trying to keep watch on the conferences um, and as soon as I see they go virtual try to reach out and see if you still want to attend um, and then that's okay if you still want to attend that's great it'll just be the registration cost then um, or if you decide that no you don't really want to attend virtual that's okay just let us know um, and we can make changes later because um, we understand that things are going to happen this year still or this next year mm -hmm. and then and they, uh, start out one way and they change yeah i mean we right yeah. now have our um the arsl conference association for rural and small libraries that's coming up in the fall is um the moment part virtual part in person Mm -hmm. But they are requiring proof of vaccination. Right. It looks like they're not going with the canceling in person. They're requiring proof of vaccination, meaning actually mm -hmm. sending them a cop you know, copy of your vaccination card. Um, yeah. Other or other ones, just like what happened last year, they just flip totally into virtual only. Yeah. Just keep an eye on it, and we'll adjust this as you need. Yeah. Yep. Um, with conferences and the classes. Uh, we don't register you for either one. You do all the registrations yourself, mm -hmm. um, make the arrangements, and then after the conference or after the class, you'll request um, the reimbursement from us, and that's how the funding works there. Um, and then for the CE and the training projects, if there's maybe a bigger library staff or or like a board member training that you've been wanting to do, uh, maybe partnering with another library or maybe another organization, um, maybe doing like diversity training, um, or you can see some of the other projects listed. That would be that would be something we could do this year too. Um, I think we had a, two applications last year who did this. Um, Those in-service no. days are things that a lot of libraries yeah. do this for, yeah. I know, in the past, that um, you know, you're bringing in, doing a day of where the library shuts down and everybody does some sort of training and you bring in speakers or presenters, yeah. you're in person, yeah. so and be, they, they charge you something for it, You we would cover that, yeah. Yeah, so it could be a whole training day or if there's just like a specific training speaker, you could do that. Um, I know a lot of presenters right now are doing you know, like a one hour training webinar that you could, you know, have for just your library um, to watch and that could be covered under this grant mm -hmm. um, if you want to apply for that. Um, so are this, are this, these, this one, the CE and training one also a reimbursement grant like the other two? No, so that would, these, um, if you want to click on the application. Um, um, this one here? Yeah, it should link you to it. So this, um it's very similar to the old youth grant <laughs> application <laughs> um you just go ahead and fill that out and then if the application if that application is approved you would request the funds um beforehand and then you would need to fill out um send us all the receipts and everything after the project and then mm -hmm. fill out that um the request for payment form yeah <laughs> totally <laughs> left my head request for payment form and then um the receipts and then um fill out after the project just telling us how it did and how things went um and then i would so after the application is approved i'll send out um more the forms and the details of exactly what oh, you'll need to fill out for me. Um, I don't have it online just because I didn't want all those forms just overwhelming people. Yeah, um, no, we don't like the reimbursement forms. Yeah, and all of our, I didn't mention that. That's good that you mentioned that, Holly. Yeah, all of ours, you apply <clears throat> for all these grants and then there will be follow up paperwork. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Official legal there will be more. Sign with us and, and everything, but none of that is on the website. We, we mail or email that to you. Um, yeah. You've yeah. Yeah. So then if you want to go back, <clears throat> the, 
then so that's the longer application for the bigger um, staff pro training projects. Um, but then if you scroll up to either the online course or the conference application. Oh, this one here. Yeah. So this is a little shorter. Obviously, you just fill out um, your information on top and just a short justification for why you want to go. Um, and what do you think you'll learn from the experience, either from the class or the conference? Is there sessions in particular that you're really interested in going to? Um, is there a project at your library that you think this class will help you with? You know, like if you're taking cataloging, is there um, you know something specific you're really wanting um, this to help you with? And then just estimate the costs. Um, so obviously if you're taking an online course you'll just have the the registration fee um and then if you're attending a conference you'll just estimate um the other like the travel costs um and you might have to look at previous conference years to see what they've charged for um hotels or conference registration and if you have any questions um just let me know and i'm happy to look around um, and try to help to find some costs and things for you. Um, so I think that's about it for the CE grants, unless there's any questions. And for something that's specific to these two, you'll note down here that you Oh, yeah, the support, support form, yes. You have to have officially that your library director or someone signs off that you're Yes, so if you want to click that, it's just um, a short little form that says, my director or head of the board knows that I'm applying for this and they're supportive. And then just sign that and return it to me. So that's a special thing for these CE grants, yep. Otherwise, it is due January 14th and you will hear back before or on February 4th, yes. 2022. <laughs> yeah, I will mention too, since you're saying you said it that way too, which we didn't, that uh, when you when we will uh, announce the dates that says on our page of when you'll we'll announce when the grants have been awarded, that's our like end date, um, possible as long as it could take, <laughs> that's our goal, um, but you may hear earlier than that actually, is yeah. get everything evaluated and look, have, look through them all quicker, you'll hear quicker, that's just our latest deadline we've given ourselves. <laughs> Okay, I've got a question here that I'm not sure if I understand, Jenny, you might have to clarify. Can the CE grants be post-dated like the library improvement grants? What do you mean by post-dated? Well, I think probably if there's a workshop or a something in January and they're not gonna hear until February 4th if they get a grant, oh. they'll attend something in January and maybe it'll be approved. I don't know, I'm guessing that's oh. the question. Um, yeah, I don't sure. Yeah, what do you mean by that, Jenny? Post dated? I'm not sure if I understand the if that's what you're talking about when I said that the I know that well the library improvement grants you can buy things before. That's because it's ARPA funding. The CE and what I'll be talking about in a second are the internship grants or state funding. Um, but it's you know it's our rules for what we do, so I'm not sure yeah. what she means by post dated. Or if it's like a class or a conference. Mm -hmm. Well, well, what would that or be? I mean, you, if you're applying now, if there is something that happens to start before that, is that okay if they say yeah, what, what Sally just described? It's actually a course I want to take in January or February. Yeah, it should be okay. Yeah, just um, if you want to email me with the details and the dates, um, I'm happy to look at anything um, mm -hmm. and I can let you know. Um. Oh, in September of this year. So, oh, she said staff was approved for a leadership workshop that will start in September and the library has paid her registration fee. She wants to know if uh, that could be applied for and get reimbursed. Um, How about could that? You, 
Do you send me the details and we can chat about it? Cool. Yeah. Do like what the, yeah, like what the details, like um, what the workshop is and um, the, the staff dates, member, I'll yeah, the dates that. and everything. Yeah, she'll do that. She says, sure thing. Okay. Yeah. Cool. All right. All right. Any other questions anybody has about the CE or training grants? Are any last words uh, you need to let people know about Holly? Um, I don't think so. I think that's about everything. If you're unsure about anything, you just email us and we will yes. let you know. Um, as you can see here, if you notice, um, you know, Holly and I are both working from home, um, but we are all connected. We have our email. Um, that we are mowed into, we're connected every day. Um, voicemails go to our email, so we'll always get back to you. Even if we're not physically in our office, it's all good. All right, let me get back to the main page here. So the last grant that we have available, which is actually becoming able to apply for before the CE grants, but <laughs> is the internship grants. Um, they, uh, next Thursday, they will go live. Um, they'll be due November 5th and you know, by the end of November, if you've, um, been approved for it, um, our internship grants are being funded via our state budget again this year. So this is not an ARPA thing. Um, and this is our, just our internship grant program. Um, uh, the key, um, the purpose of the internship grant program ideally is to get students, high school and college students, interested in um, pursuing librarianship as a career. Um, it doesn't have to be the ultimate end result. <laughs> it's okay if they just decide to work in the library because it's, it's their you know summer job um, and they don't uh, choose to go on to library school, that's okay. Um, but the idea is just to introduce them to this is what we do here at the library, this is a career that you might be interested in, um, is you know, one of our goals, but also to help libraries who might need extra staff. Uh, the internship grants will give you funding to pay the salary to someone to help you out working at the library. Um, you can do anywhere between a $500 grant or $1,000 per, um, uh, up to $1,000 per library. Um, you could do two interns at $500 each being paid or one just getting $1,000, um, the whole $1,000, whatever uh, you would like to do. Um, but it's basic, you know, that's our main goal is to show that it is a viable career choice for you. Um, but it'd be great if we had more people joining the profession, so try and work for that. But it doesn't always work out. Um, we have some of the basic information here about the grant. As I said, either $500 or $1,000 um, per library. Um, I do say here what I accept, this is something here, expect to do 20 to 25, uh, but it doesn't have to be that. There's no, um, it's a matter of how much money we have basically and how many applications we get. Um, for this grant, you do have um, until the end of November of 2022 for the internship to wrap up. So depending on what your project is you want to work on or what jobs you have been doing, you have until then. Um, so this has got a longer deadline than the uh, previous ones we had talked about. Uh, we have a lot of information here, um, tips and uh, examples of things you can use uh, to come up with your program or your plan for what you're gonna have your intern do. There is the Nebraska Department of Economic Development also has a great guidebook about um, for businesses, but uh, for any employers, but it will work for you as a library as well. Just the basics of that's a good internship program. Um, this one is limited to accredited Nebraska public libraries. So this is um, this have its regular rules. Nothing has changed with the funding for the internship grants. Um, we do have a link here that goes to our list of accredited public libraries in the state. That maybe isn't working. Oh, there it goes. I didn't click on it right. There it is. <laughs> so you can check and see if you are accredited or not. Um, if you're interested in being accredited, talk to me about that. Um, so this is only for accredited public libraries, but just like as I mentioned earlier, you can partner with other organizations who are not accredited public libraries for this grant, um, as you can for both the youth and library improvement as well. So um, if 
there is something you'd want to do. We've had some interns that have done um, part of their internship was at the public library and part was at the local community college because they were in the same community and they wanted to give them all this experience at different types of libraries, academic and public. And that is that would be great. Um, there are some rules about the type of intro, who can be an intern. Um, it has to be a high school or college student. Um, and they have never have never been employed by um, a library before. So this is people who've never worked at a library, new people. Um, volunteers are do not count. They, you're not paying a volunteer. So a volunteer, if they've been a volunteer at your library, they're okay to be an intern. Um, it's just they couldn't have previously been paid to work at the library. Um, as far as paying them, that's your choice. You can do a stipend or you can um, hire them as a temporary employee, um, whichever works best. You know, you talk to your city people to find out, would you guys like to do this this way? Um, or would you just, just like us to do a, a stipend where you just pay the full amount to the intern? Um, but you do have to think about how you want to do it, depending on which way you're going. Um, if you're doing them as a part-time employee, the amount that we give you as a grant can cover, like the thousand dollars will cover their wages, plus any taxes, um, you know, FICA taxes, all the usual things you have to take out for working. Um, if you do it as a stipend, you give the full amount to the um, intern, and then they have to, when they submit that to the IRS as part of, part of their um, taxes each year, they then have to make sure they've allotted for the fact that some of this money, or I have to be able to cover the taxes that I owe for this. So just have to you know, think about that. Um, you do also have to meet Nebraska's minimum wage requirements of paying $9 per hour. That is the minimum. Um, there is uh, some rules about students, depending on their age, that um, um, you can pay them a training wage if you want to. Um, we have the information on here. Um, however, um, we like to encourage you to pay at least the minimum wage because that just you know makes everybody happier. Everyone has a good experience, but you are allowed to do less if you want to. Um, you can hire you know high school students who are quite young. We've had many libraries do this. Um, 14 uh, as long as young as 14, and but there are state rules about that about when they can work, um, what days, what times. Um, that's all cleared, um, explained here. So if you are hiring someone very young. Um, make sure you get it, read this, and you will have to complete a form that you have to submit to the Department of Labor, um, saying that you are hiring someone who is um, 14 or 15, under, under the age of 16. So do keep that in mind if you do end up hiring someone who is much younger. Um, there's the um, rules here about how what you will do as, as a library um, running the intern program. Um, what the library commission will do will get you the grant funds. Um, this is something that we give you the funds right away ahead of time. This is not a reimbursement after you've spent it. So as soon as we um, approve your application, we will then send you um, the forms, the agreement to fill out and a um, request for payment form. We have to have paperwork showing we sent you, you asked us for the money and they will send you the money, the grant, um, the internship money before you even have that person hired. So you will have that in your budget ready to pay them um, right off the bat. You don't have to pay it out of your own funding and then get reimbursed. So you get this one ahead of time. There are a series of surveys and reports that both you as the library director or the library or the intern supervisor and the intern themselves have to submit. They're not on here. I send you a separate document with links to all these things online um, that you get afterwards. So there are multiple things you do have to submit and keep up on that. Um, and I will nag you to make sure you can do them. <laughs> um, and here's the application form itself. Like I said, it opens up next Thursday. Um, basic information about the library. Um, are you doing, how much do you want? How many interns are you doing? And then your plans. This is where you're going to explain um, in detail what you want them to do. Uh, do you want them to have a summer reading program? Do you want them to help create a library website, um, do you have them doing, working in the maker space, whatever it is you want to do. Um, the schedule, one of the timing of when you're going to be doing anything, uh, when this will be, you know, when you will have this intern working in the library. Um, and then this is also one where you just submit it, send it to us, no signature page follow-up, just um, submit it to me. 
Uh, so give a lot of detail here. I would recommend using these resources that we have over here on um, examples of timelines, examples of an orientation plan, the kind of things you can do. Um, this orientation plan you notice talks about introducing them to every single part of the library. And that's okay if you want them to know about every single thing that you're doing. That's what some of these people, some libraries have done with these interns is, here's everything that you could possibly do as a library career. We're going to have you work in each department for a couple of weeks throughout the whole summer. And that's fine. Or you can say specifically, I need a person just to help out with summer reading. And that's all their internship is for. And that's okay as well. Um, so this is just an example of, here's everything you could show them. Feel free to do all of them. Pick one whichever it is you think you need extra staff for. Um, if you have someone already in mind who's been working at, the, who's been volunteering at the library or who is very um, involved in just using the library and you'd like to make them be your intern, that's okay. You can have someone already in mind and say, we're gonna apply to get make you an intern and actually pay you to work at the library next summer. That's perfectly fine. Um, or you can request the internship grant and then do an actual, um, you know, open up for applications from the community and say, we have an internship available, submit your application to us and we'll, and you guys decide who you're gonna hire. Um, that doesn't have to go to me. <laughs> uh, and you can do it that way as well and just open up for anyone, whichever works for you. Um, we do have some questions here that I was gonna answer about this. Uh, yes, you okay, well, can one apply for an internship grant for more than one year in a row. Um, I received an internship grant this year. I'd like to apply again, but with the same person as the intern is this year. Ah, okay. Yes, absolutely. You can apply every single year for an intern if you want to, and just keep having people come and work at your library. We have many libraries that do this as a regular thing every year, and um, it's just their standard. Every summer, we know we need the extra help, so every year we're going to apply for an internship grant, and that's fine, and we will most likely approve you every year to get your intern unless something crazy happens. Um, and you can have it be the same person if you want to. Um, well, mm, that actually is not, because if they've been paid, uh, employed at, at the library previously, then no, um, you can't have the same person. That is one of the restrictions we have. Um, so sorry, so you can have an internship grant each year, but it can't be the same person next year that would get paid with the internship grant. That's a different in, di difference there, yeah. So yes, you can get one every year, but you'd have to be a different person for next year that gets the internship. Um, I would say though, yeah. <laughs> um, but I would say email me about that. Um, I mean, the idea of this grant is to bring in new people all the time to working in the library and potentially becoming, you know, uh, going into librarianship. Uh, but it's not, as I said, it's not required that they follow through with that. Um, send me an email and let me, you know, explain to me what's going on and we'll see what I can decide to do about that. Um, I have to say this, nobody's ever asked to have the same person the next year, so <laughs> I've never had to, you know, think about a uh, waiving rule, but shoot me an email and um, we'll discuss it, explain what's going on and what this person has, has done or said about wanting to continue and we'll see if we can uh, do an exception. Generally speaking, someone does an internship and then they like go off to another job next year or they go to college because they were a high school student and it's a whole different situation, yeah. <laughs> All right. Any other questions about the internship grants? Um, there, I don't know if this is updated or not. It is, awesome. Um, so this is an online application, but there is a PDF version available of this that if you wanted to print this out as just a, a cheat sheet, um, ooh, that might need some adjusting, but um, if you wanted to, you can uh, print this out if you wanted to prepare for what you're going to be completing. Because there is, as you can see in this one, Similar to the um, youth one, lots of free text boxes of basically just tell me everything about all of these. Um, definitely something you want to pre-write somewhere else in Word or something and then just copy and paste it into here. And these are due November 5th. And you will know, as I said, by the end of November if um, it's been approved. 
So your actual intern can start anytime after November of this year. Uh, if you have want to do them do it over the summer, over the winter. I keep talking about summer because that's just typically that's common what many libraries do is for summer <coughs> reading program. But um, it doesn't have to be. Your intern can start anytime after you've been approved um, for the grant. Um, so schedule is totally up to you. All right. Any questions about any of our grants? I think we've done answered all the different questions we have so far. Um, library improvement and youth are available now, both due October 7th. Both are um, um, You'll know by the end of October, October 29th, if you've been approved. Internship grants open up next week, are due November 5th. You will be notified by November 30th if it's been approved. And CE grants, continue education and training, open October 4th, due January 14th of 2022. And you'll know by February 4th of 2022 if you have been approved on that one. So almost to 11.30 here, about an hour and a half, not bad. Anybody have any last minute desperate questions you want to ask us of us right now? Get it typed in. Um, we have a thank you. Thanks, ladies. Very informative. You are appreciated. Thank you. We hope so. We're very excited this year that we can do all of our grants. And for all of them, we have um, more money to give out. So hopefully it will not be as much of a stressful situation for us. <laughs> We are making our decisions this year. Um, ARPA funding being used for the Library Improvement and Youth Grants has freed up more state of our state budget for the CE and internship grants. So it's kind of a trickle down that actually works, um, that all of them now have a much more money available to them. And this is right now this year only, a, you know, special case, all these special rules and, and extra money. Uh, next year, we'll see. Um, you know, last year we had the CARES Act in response to the pandemic. This year we have ARPA. Next year, if the pandemic is still going, there may be some new um, act um, monies um, allotted by Congress. We don't know. Um, but you can't depend on that, so don't. <laughs> Jump on these grants now. Apply this year. If you're ever thinking about it, ever we're just waffling on it, this is not, this is the, not the year to waffle. <laughs> Um, and if you've ever been not allowed, able to apply for a grant, the Library Improvement and Youth, because you are not accredited, you can now get apply, get your applications in. All right, doesn't look like any other questions came in. Any last words, Sally and Holly, before we wrap things up? I don't think so. I say apply. Yeah, definitely. Make it hard on us to make choices. <laughs> Yeah, we want more than, yeah, we want all, every library to apply. <laughs> okay, it's, and also it's not just us. Uh, you said make it hard, <laughs> Holly. We do have, uh, we do always put together a little committee or team of people that yes. helps us decide. Yes. It's not just me and, and Holly and Sally having to do this on our own. <laughs> no. So. All right, I don't see another question. I think we'll wrap it up for today. So, uh, great. Um, Thank you everyone for being here today. Thank you, um, Holly and Sally, for joining me. Um, since we did go about an hour and a half today, um, we usually a lot give, um, a, a Encompass Live is normally an hour long and you earn one CE credit for each um, attending each session. But today's, because we ran for an hour and a half, we're gonna do 1.5. <laughs> That's how it works out, correct, Holly? Yep. Gotta go a little long, yeah. So you'll get one and a half CE for attending today or watching today's recording when that is available. Um, so I'm gonna go back to our Encompass Live page. Um, this is where our archive shows appear. Um, everyone who attended today and registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when the recording is ready. Um, should be by the end of the day tomorrow at the latest, as long as GoToWebinar and YouTube cooperate with me. Um, and you can see here, many of our shows run longer than an hour. Kind of have trouble sticking to that, but that's okay. <laughs> Talk as long as it takes for everyone every, to get the information out and answer everybody's questions. So top of the list here, today's show will be linked to, um, the link will be to the recording in our YouTube channel. 
Um, while I'm here, I'll show you, you can search our show archives to see if there's been anything on a topic that they're interested in. Um, the full archives you can search or just the most recent 12 months if you want something very current. Um, this is because this is our full show archives going back to the beginning of Encompass Live. I'm not going to scroll all the way down, but Encompass Live premiered in January 2009, and we have our full show archives here. So that's what, 11, 12 years. Um, but uh, pay attention to the original broadcast date if you do watch a recording. Um, some information will stand the test of time. Some will become outdated or wrong. Links might not work anymore. Um, programs or services may have... Um, stop not exist anymore or have changed drastically um, so just pay attention to what kind of session you're watching and the original broadcast date if you do watch any of our um, previous shows um, we do have a facebook page for the my goodness encompass live show um where we do post post when we've got shows coming up here's a reminder to log in today's show info about our presenters um, so if you do like to use Facebook, give us a like over there. Otherwise, we also use Twitter and Instagram. So far, and we use the hashtag Encump Live for anything related to Encompass Live. Um, ah, good question. I just got about CE. Now that I mentioned that. Do you submit the CE for attendees, or should we do that? If you attend a live show, we submit that for you. So I send that off to Linda Babcock, who's our administrative assistant for library development, and she awards your CE for that. If you watch an archive show, you have to submit it yourself. Um, so if you watch the archive show, you will um, use one of our little CE activity reporting forms and submit that yourself. We don't have any way to know who has watched a recording. Mm -hmm. But for the live shows after today, I will have a spreadsheet from GoToWebinar telling me everyone who attended here live. Um, you will also receive an email from the GoToWebinar system in about an hour saying a thank you for attending and saying that this free, if you need anything for your records, for your proof or anything, saying this um, is your proof of attending the actual live show. All right, so that's for today. Um, we've got our upcoming shows listed here. I've got some more things going to filling in for October, so pay attention to our calendar. Um, you'll note there's uh, one week of the year we do not do Encompass Live, and that's the week of our state library conference. Um, NLA this year um, is the week of October 13th. There will not be an Encompass Live. Um, at the moment, NLA is a combination of virtual and in-person. Um, so if you are interested in registering for that, we'll be off that week. Um, I hope you join us next week when our topic is manga and graphic novels in your library. Uh, Brooke Zarko is library director at our Blair Public Library and Tech Center um, here in Blair, Nebraska, and she's got a great presentation. So if you've ever done, never had graphic novels in your library or um, our manga or anything, uh, this is definitely a session to um, watch. She did this as part of the Southeast Library Systems training extravaganza, I believe. Um, but it wasn't recorded there, so we're having her come on Income Live, and she's going to um, talk again about um, doing this kind of um, other kind of collections in your library. Uh, so this might be a good thing to watch to see if you might want to start one of these programs and then apply for a library improvement or youth grant to create one of these um, collections. Right, Sally? That is good. Good idea. <laughs> um, all right, and, if, uh, and after that, we've got um, library workers talking about the library science coursework. So if you have someone who's doing an internship grant and maybe is actually thinking about going to library school, in two weeks, we have some of our commission staff who are both working at the commission and at the same time working on their library science degrees um, in various, um, couple different, three different programs will um, talk about their experiences doing that right now. So other than that, that wraps up for today's show. Thank you, everybody, for being here. And we'll see you on the next episode, future episode of Encompass Live. Bye-bye. Okay. Apply for a grant. Thanks. Get money. <laughs> <laughs>